Okay, so uh, in, in the chemical analysis topic, uh, you have to know how to test for uh, these different ions in aqueous solutions. So um, copper 2 plus, iron 2 plus, uh, Fe3 plus, and so on. You have to know how to test for those in aqueous solution. And uh, you do this by adding um, sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, group 1 hydroxides are unusual because they are about the only metal hydroxides which are soluble. All the other metal hydroxides are insoluble. Now that's a common feature of group one compounds. They're always, nearly all group one compounds are, are soluble. So now if you get a test tube, say for example, I've got, uh, let's have a test tube and we have got, let's say we've got iron, uh, iron two sulfate solution in there, FeSO4. That would be a very, very, very pale green color. Um, you can hardly see the green color, but it's a pale green color. And what you would do is you'd add some sodium hydroxide solution into there, which is you have in the lab, it's just alkali, of course. So dilute sodium hydroxide one mole per decimeter cubed or about that. And what would happen is you would get a precipitate, go cloudy uh, of iron two, hydroxide okay precipitate ppt and that will look cloudy and whenever you have a solution that goes cloudy it's because you've made an insoluble solid that's what a, a precipitate is so uh, it's the same principle for all of them except with the um like i say obviously with copper you get a blue precipitate that will tell you of cu2 plus ions uh, if you get a brown precipitate, it tells you you've got uh, iron three ions, Fe three plus ions. White precipitates, well, it could be either magnesium or calcium and or aluminium. And we'll come and talk about aluminium again in particular. That's a little bit different at the end of the video. But let's write down the equation for this iron two reaction. So it would be so you, uh, Fe SO4 in aqueous solution. And you'd add sodium hydroxide solution, NaOH. You're going to get a precipitate of iron to like the formula of iron to hydroxide is that because of course the hydroxide iron has got a single charge in it, FOH minus, whereas the iron is Fe2 plus there. Uh, and so what's going to be left over? Well, you have, you can see here what we've got, we've got some sodium ions and some sulfate ions. So here we're going to have left in, not be solid, left in solution, we've got sodium sulfate, actually. We're not really interested in that, but that's what's left in solution there. Uh, and it's the same, same reaction, essentially, for all of those. And if you just wanted to write that as an ionic equation, well, we could, we could write that down as an ionic equation. Because, of course, when you dissolve an ionic substance, it splits, uh, it doesn't exist as an ionic lattice anymore. When you dissolve it in water, those ions separate. So you have a load of iron two plus ions, and they're completely away from the sulfate ions. Nothing to do with them anymore. Floating around in water, you've got sulfate ions, which are two minus. I'll leave the state symbols off here because they're all aqueous. Uh, and then you're going to have, oh, I need to balance that. So we need a two Na there, and that balances in it, yeah. And then we're going to have two Na plus ions in aqueous solution, two hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. Now, that isn't an aqueous solution. It's a solid, so I'm going to write down the full formula. I'm not going to split it into the ions. That's the convention. And here, this is in solution, so it's going to be 2Na plus and SO4 2 minus. Now, let's see if we've got any spectator ions here. The spectator ions are ones that don't change. They're the same on both sides of the equation. Um, now we can see there that nothing happens to those sulfate ions. They're in aqueous solution and nothing happens to those sodium ions. So we can see really what fundamentally is happening is we've got iron two plus ions combining with hydroxide ions to form iron two hydroxide solid. And that tells us that the the solution must have contained Fe2 plus ions. And I say it's the same reactions for all of them, all of the others. Now, 
what I will talk about now is the magnesium, the calcium and the aluminium because they all give a white precipitate. So you can't really tell which is which. And you can't actually tell the difference between magnesium and calcium. You could have either. But the aluminium, you can tell it's different to the other two because, okay, you first of all, you add a little bit of NaOH and you get a white precipitate of AlOH3. And then you add more, add excess NaOH and the white precipitate dissolves. So aluminium is really easy to spot really. That white precipitate will go clear again, clear and colorless when you add extra sodium hydroxide. And the specification, it says you don't need to know the equation for that. You do know the other ones, but I'll, I'll tell you anyway, if you're interested, so you get aluminium hydroxide once you form that by adding NaOH. If you add excess NaOH, you actually form this compound, which is NaAlOH4. Um, and that is soluble. It's an aqueous solution. This is a solid. So that's the that's what redissolves. And really, this is an ionic compound, this sodium compound here. And it's actually made up of sodium ions in solution. And you can probably see there that this bit has got to be negatively charged. This is called the aluminate ion, ALOH4. And it's got a one minus charge on it. As I say, you don't actually need to know that. You just need to know how to use the test to show the presence of aluminium ions.